Subaru has added its EyeSight safety technology as standard across the Forester lineup, the manufacturer has confirmed. The Japanese brand's EyeSight system uses two stereo cameras mounted on each side of the rear-view mirror to capture precise 3D images that can distinguish cars from motorbikes, bicycles, pedestrians and lane markings. EyeSight has also been tailored to the specific country it's being sold in. Also included in the EyeSight package is adaptive cruise control, pre-collision braking, pre-collision throttle management, lane departure, lane keep assist and lead vehicle start alert. All six safety features work together with the two cameras to help prevent the Forester from colliding with pedestrians and other vehicles. A study conducted by the Institute for Traffic Accident Research and Data Analysis in Japan found that Subaru vehicles equipped with EyeSight were involved in 61% fewer accidents between 2010 and 2014 than those without the equipment. Globally, over 1 million Subarus have been fitted with EyeSight since 2016. EyeSight will be available as standard from October on all XE Leonartronic and XE Premium Leonartronic Foresters. Prices start from £28,995 with the off-roader available with only two engines, a 148bhp 2.0-litre petrol or a 145bhp 2.0-litre diesel. Do you know how it feels inside the new 2018 Nissan Leaf? Last week at the Drive Electric event in Northern California, I was excited for the opportunity to get inside the pre-production 2018 Nissan LEAF and check it out for myself. It's no secret that I have been one of the biggest critics of the current 2018 Nissan LEAF, not just for its embarrassingly impractical range but also for its incredibly poor appearance. It's almost like the designer's main strategy was the same as one adopted by a dysfunctional and overprotective father whose daughter is going to her high school prom, make sure she looks as unattractive as possible so that nobody wants to take her home. Granted, Nissan took a chance on a full electric concept back in 2010 before it was either cool or necessary to have a compliance car. You can even argue that they paved the way for Tesla and the future of electric cars. But then again, I don't believe electric cars like the Nissan Leaf would ever have made it past its first generation if it wasn't for Tesla showing the world what a real electric car could be. Why I like the new Nissan Leaf. But we are here now, and so is the long-awaited all-new Nissan Leaf. And you know what? I don't hate it. No! In fact, I actually kind of like it. The new look has far surpassed its hideous beginnings and is very much in style with the rest of today's compact cars. And the range? Well, it's not really what I would like from an all-electric car in 2018, but at about 150 miles on a single charge, it is acceptable for most daily drivers. Nissan has promised to roll out a longer range version of the car next year, which is expected to be over 200 miles. A one-year wait for a 50-plus mile range boost is very much acceptable if you ask me. I should mention that Nissan does not have any plans to create or collaborate with an existing infrastructure to be able to fast charge its cars for those who travel long distance, thus limiting the use of the car to daily driving where the car can be recharged overnight. It is not at all practical to travel in this car beyond a 60 or so mile radius, like you would be able to do in a Tesla using their ever-growing supercharging network. They say it's the inside that matters. Well, the inside of the Nissan Leaf didn't get that much of an upgrade, though it is also well, acceptable. Everything that you need is there, including a touchscreen, which most importantly includes integration with iPhone and Android devices something that Tesla is still missing in all of their cars even today. The biggest complaint that I hear from the electric car community is, once again, the absence of a thermal management system, which a lot of times results in range loss. I'm not sure why this hasn't been addressed in the seven years that Nissan had to develop this model, but it's just not there and a lot of people will most likely pass on the car specifically for that reason. Now let's talk about the price. This model starts at about $30,000, 
which is way too close to the much more sophisticated, and altogether simply better, Tesla Model 3. However, unlike Tesla, Nissan does offer dealer discounts, discounted lease deals, and is much further away from its 200,000 electric car sale than Tesla, which will eventually trigger the end of the $7,500 federal tax credit currently offered. Best of all, you are not likely going to be stuck on a waiting list for a new Leaf when you want one, once Nissan starts rolling them out in the US in the beginning of the next year. Overall, I believe that the new Nissan Leaf is a huge improvement over its first-generation ugly sibling. It will now be a real and practical option for those who would like to switch to an electric car but do not necessarily have the budget, or patience, to purchase a Tesla. There is still a lot of room to improve, but this is a huge step in the right direction, which I believe will continue to keep the Nissan Leaf in first place as the world's best-selling all-electric car for a while longer. Is there a tougher test of quality than letting hundreds of learner drivers practice in your car? Vehicles owned and operated by driving instructors go through a lot, which is why reliability is key. So is fuel economy, because trips to the pumps can easily add up to thousands over the year. It's no surprise then that many instructors stick with tried and tested models such as the Vauxhall Corsa, but some are starting to make the jump to electric vehicles because these offer rock-bottom running costs. Paul Tomlin, owner and operator of Green Driving School in Stoke-on-Trent, Staps, was one of the first to make the switch and has been using an electric Nissan LEAF to teach automatic learners since 2011. He's racked up 126,000 trouble-free miles in his latest car and has now traded it in for a new model. Auto Express caught up with Tomlin to see what it's like teaching the next crop of EV drivers. Like most other motorists, Tomlin, of Holcroft, began looking at electric vehicles to save on running costs. He told us the brakes on his previous cars often took a lot of punishment. I went through three full sets of pads in 60,000 miles, he said. Tomlin also calculated that a year's worth of teaching learners cost him £5,000 in fuel. He became one of the first people in the UK to order a Leaf, purchasing a 2011 Ascenta import from Japan. Because he was one of the first EV instructors, Tomlin initially struggled to get a set of dual controls installed until Nissan put him in touch with a local engineer. It was a good car, but because it was an import there were some teething problems that I had to get used to, such as the battery life indicator being slightly optimistic. He said. In 2013, he swapped the import for a black 24 kilowatts Leaf Asana with a 6.6 kilowatt hours charger, and hasn't looked back. I've done 126,000 miles in it and it's never broken down, he said. The only thing I've ever had to replace was the windscreen wiper motor at 90,000 miles, and that's it. Even more impressive are the brakes which according to the last inspection are only 50% worn after 126,000 miles of teaching. A typical day for Tom and we'll see him teach for 4 hours, take a break and charge the car before another 3 hours of lessons. He reckons he normally covers in excess of 130 miles a day, which is more than the Leaf's 124 mile quoted range. The public charging infrastructure has been vital for me, he added. Tomlin said he initially struggled to find enough public charging points, but his local Nissan dealer was able to keep its rapid charger open 24 hours a day. It's not an issue of range for me. It's all about the rapid charging capacity, he said, adding that the infrastructure must grow if electric vehicles are to become more popular. More than 50 students have passed their automatic tests so far in Tomlin's LEAF, with several others having taken lessons. There's never a single complaint from them, he said. In fact, they're all very surprised at how easy the LEAF is to drive. And the instructor told us that his students are often more relaxed in the LEAF than their predecessors were in any of his previous cars, adding, 
This makes it easier to teach them how to drive. But Tomlin isn't just teaching his students how to drive a car. He's helping them become future EV owners by showing them how to charge the leaf on a timer, where to find charging stations and which cables to use at them, plus what to do when the car is low on battery. Tomlin told us he also teaches his students how to follow the driver and vehicle standards agencies. DVSA, ECA safe driving guidelines when braking and accelerating. In short, he explained, I'm preparing them for the future. And his teaching seems to be paying off, because Tomlin says many of his students won't even consider purchasing a petrol or a diesel car after passing their test in his leaf.